we're going to look at the difference between the beast sensor and the push sensor. So let's jump into this video. So what we want with this movement is a violent hip extension accompanied by a upward pull. So let me start by saying that if you're new to training according to the force velocity curve, you should start by looking at this video that we made a few months ago. If you're familiar with force velocity training, uh, and you're looking for a uh, force velocity tracker, then the first thing you would stumble upon uh, would probably be the beast sensor, so this one, or the push sensor, so this one. So in this video, we're gonna look at the differences between those two. Uh, I've used the beast sensor for about four or five months. Uh, after those months, I bought the, uh, the push sensor and I've used this one for about three to four months. So I started with the beast sensor and of course the first time that you use a uh, accelerometer you will be surprised by the things that it can do. The nice thing about this is that it has a magnet so you can just clip it on top of your bar and it just sticks right on the bar. Then when you uh, lift your bar you see the speed on the screen and then you know which speed you hold um, and what your output is. So at first I, I really liked it, uh, I still like it. But one thing I really noticed is that after a few weeks the velocity really uh, fluctuates uh, when I was doing my exercises. While uh, with the naked eye I wasn't really sure if the speed was that accurate. Um, I'm not sure if it, if it is actually uh, that accurate but um, it will do the job, it will do the trick, you know uh, how fast you can go on the average speed, you know your peak velocity, um, so yeah, it will basically do the trick. So after using the beast sensor for a few months, I uh, researched for a different one and I looked at the push sensor, so I bought it and it was I think around 100 euros more expensive. Um, so the reason that I wanted to go for this one uh, to try out also is that it measures uh, horizontal forces also. So with the beast sensor, that's one thing that I uh, really did not like about this, is that it does not measure horizontal forces or vertical forces going downwards. So it only measures upwards movements. So stuff like deadlifts, squats, bench presses, uh, cleans and snatches of course, but not sled pushes, um, mat ball throws, which are really great exercises to improve on um, speed and explosiveness. So that's one thing that I, um, I missed with the beast sensor and uh, what the, the push uh, really uh, did great. So when I first bought the push, I um, needed around one or two days to get to the hang around this, uh, this thing. The weird thing is that with different exercises, it does different stuff. So with one exercise, it did show the actual velocity while I'm doing my, uh, my reps. But with another exercise, it would not do it or it would um, basically be very off. So actually with this thing, it's basically the same as with the beast sensor, but it does measure horizontal forces. But most of the times, you need to look at it afterwards, so after you've done your sets and you pressed the button instead of uh, during your sets. So that's the negative thing about this. I was really excited about this thing, but I got a little bit disappointed uh, after knowing that um, you don't know the actual velocity while doing your reps. So they are both, I think, pretty equal uh, as to the accuracy of the speed. Uh, one thing that is better from this one is that it uh, does measure horizontal forces, but uh, you know, not inset but afterwards. And with the beast sensor, it only measures vertical forces. 
But the nice thing about the beast sensor, in my opinion, is that you can clip it on right on your bar. And for this, you always need a, a uh, bag and wrap this around the bar. So this is not a, a um, magnet. So that's my opinion. Uh, I just like to clip it on and be done with it instead of needing to wrap it around the bar and uh, yeah, place all the stuff around it. One thing I did really like about the push though is that um, it has a lot of applications inside of the app. So you can measure uh, free movement, that is like with a video and you see the, the speed with different exercises, so like with a throw or with a sled push, and you can benchmark different exercises uh, to see how you progress. Uh, one thing I also really like about this is that uh, you can um, create an account for your athletes, if you're a coach, and you can um, benchmark weekly or daily, basically, uh, with different exercises. So I use this a lot for uh, vertical jumps and to screen how an athlete of mine is doing during the week. So I start at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week and I uh, look at the fluctuations inside the vertical jump. So for instance, if uh, in, at Monday he jumps uh, 20 centimeters and at Friday he jumps 23 centimeters, I know that uh, he has recovered throughout the week. If he uh, then the next Monday jumps uh, 18, I know, okay, his weekend was a bit rough. Friday maybe had a uh, uh, hard training day. So we need to uh, step back a bit for this training and make sure that he relaxes a bit during the training session. So that's a, a big plus for this one. And I don't know if the beast has it. If it does have it, uh, I was not able to find it. So. Big plus for this one. Staying on the push band for this topic. One thing I did really not like about the push band, you're not able to add new exercises when you just only want the app and beast sensor. You need to have a account in order to add more exercises. And with the beast sensor, you can easily just add on new exercises and uh, use it in your training. So that's uh, one thing that I did not like about the push band and that more like about the beast sensor is that you can uh, add exercises really easy with this one. And for this one, you need to pay around $30 per month for a, uh, a account as a coach. And I already use True Coach, so I don't need the account. So although, in my opinion, that's an issue, what I did really like about the push band is that it uh, uh, automatically saves your data so that you can look at it the next week. So if you do a snatch in week one on Monday, uh, the next week you snatch again and you see the, the speed is higher or lower than the previous week, you know that you are really, uh, really fresh and you can add on more weight if you want. So that's one thing I really like about this one is that, you, uh, that it automatically saves the data on the app. So that's a plus for the for the push band. They are both I think equally as accurate. Um, if I would have to choose one or the other, I think I would go for the push band just simply because I'm a, a coach and I use this a lot for my uh, my clients um, weekly and the beast sensor is uh, f in my opinion too um, narrow in its options. They both uh, trip from time to time, um, so you need to make sure with both of these devices that you don't drop the bar or you uh, hit an object on your way back or on your way uh, forward. One thing I really liked about the beast sensor is that when you are doing an exercise and you notice that you hit an object on the way back or that you uh, did half of a rep and it did measure it, you can really easily just uh, remove the rep and then you have, again, the uh, normal average velocity of your entire set. Um, and with this one, it's not that easy. You're not able to manually uh, grab a rep and remove it out of the set. You need to write on how many reps you did. I think it removes the rep that is furthest away from the average velocity or uh, output. So I really genuinely hope that these devices uh, get more attention inside the CrossFit realm. Uh, being that it is really easy to notice if an individual does the right speed for a particular exercise. So uh, for instance with absolute strength, so back squats, deadlifts, front squats, 
if they're uh, underneath 0.5 meters per second you know that they're doing absolute strength work and that they're getting stronger but if they want to do absolute speed work that you can also measure their speed in order to dictate if the uh, dose response if the, uh, is the dose response that you actually want as a coach it's also really easy to measure a weekly progress or monthly progress instead of always having the need to uh, max out a specific exercise that does really have a strain on your central nervous system. So it's really easy with a uh, accelerometer to just clip it on the bar, do a snatch. You see for this week you have 0 0.8 meters per second on your snatch with 135. Next week you do another rep and now you have 0 0.83 meters per second on your snatch so you know that you're getting faster and basically just getting more explosive so you know that you're making progress instead of having the need to get more weight on the bar and uh, go until failure to prove that you're uh, making progress so i would highly advise to get one of those meters it's really useful uh, so guys i hope you like this video if you have another question about the uh, beast or the push sensor make sure to let us know in the comments or email them and uh, I hope to see you next time with another video.